Hello guys, I'm Superon. Welcome back to the G unit and welcome to episode five of my GVS Zero build. In this episode, we're going to be looking at mounting the engine fully. At the moment, it's just sitting on the front mounts. So let's log into the fabrication station. When I bought the chassis, it did come with some engine mounts, but these are for the Ford. They bolt in here, bolt into the chassis on these four bolts at the bottom. And then they'd normally go to the bolt holes on the Ford engine. But as this is a Vauxhall, that's not going to fit. My original plan was just to cut off these flanges and weld Vauxhall ones on. So it lined up, bolted on, and you've got your rubber mount here. But on the off chance, I dug out my old engine mounts that I made for my rear wheel drive Astra. 12 years ago and these line up with the holes and they fit almost perfectly to the chassis so they're a different design the gbs ones use a square rubber mount and that bolts through and bolts to the chassis like that but these are actually off a mark ii escort conversion to put a red top in an escort and they use round rubber bushes like suspension bushes and then you just have some brackets welded on there as you can see on the Astra subframe, it's still got the brackets on it, and that's where these slot in. So what my plan is, to get these bolted on, and just make a couple of brackets to the floor, and that'll save me a whole load of work. First of all, we need to get everything level and in the middle. So we're back up in the air, we spent a bit of time getting it exactly in the middle. The engine now is completely level with the chassis and right in the middle based on the crank. The gearbox at the back is mounted on the original GBS mount so that's given me my datum forward backwards side to side at the rear. So it's just a simple case of lining up the front, but we are now totally level in the chassis. Had to lift the mounts up a little bit to get it side to side level. Just put some little washers under to get it to the right height, some little shims. And the other thing I remembered on the other side, the mount needs a little spacer because of the shape of the block. So I've just put some washers in there. That's going to be a great job to revisit on the lathe shortly. So now what I need to do is make the side plates for the bolt to go through and that will be bolted onto the chassis. So let's get started on that. You saw I just knocked up a little pointer on the lathe. It's a nice snug fit through the middle. And that allows me to measure where the holes have got to be.
welded together. Got a big seam on the bottom, it's got to grind off so it sits flush with the chassis. Other than that, ready to go. And let's get them back on the car. I just rounded off this top edge as well, just to make it look a bit nicer. But apart from that, they're ready for paint. I left these holes at the bottom smaller. So it's easier to mark where they've got to go on the chassis. And I'll drill these out to M10 as well to match the other ones. Now let's go on to the other side. Now for some reason the mount on this side bolts up nicely, the engine's still level, but the mount isn't square with the chassis. I think that's because in the Astra, the subframe actually slopes down. So instead of having it sitting on the wonk, I think I'm just gonna cut around the top one and re-weld it square with the kit car chassis. And the other two done, come out even nicer. Certainly not going anywhere. So I've got the brackets on in place. I'm gonna move the mount a bit further on the base plate forwards, just so it gives a little bit more room to clear the exhaust. It did clear where it was, but I'll just give it a bit more clearance for heat. So I'm happy the engine's all in the right place, so we'll tack it in. All welded up and bolted on. Jack's down, it's back under its own weight. It's nice and level, much happier with that. And that's everything bolted up. You just saw me make the aluminium bush for the back we talked about earlier. So now everything's bolted tight to the block and I drilled the holes through to the engine plate. 
So my new brackets are now mounted to the chassis as well. So with the rubber bush, it's a nice and firm sitting in there. Everything's how it should be now. So I was going to pack up for today because it's actually taken me all day to make these engine mounts. And to be fair, just a bit of angle iron would probably have done the same job. But it's been nice to do a bit of fabrication again. And I'm really happy with the results. I think they've come out very well. And if I had have just put a bit of angle iron, it wouldn't have had the same effect. So I was going to pack up now because it's getting quite late. But I did want to find out how close the exhaust is. Now the engine's in its breast in place, I wanted to see what needed doing to the exhaust. So I think I might just give that a quick chop just before I go, just to see how far out it all is. So I've had a little play around, looks like with a little extension this will all go over and clear, but this one won't go over and clear, and it's just a smidge too small a gap for it to fit in there, it's almost there, so it's like I could just need to cut 20mm out of there and it needs 20mm over there. But I don't want to alter the lengths of the runners too, too much, because I know this is a proven system. Um, but looking at this one, this one is shorter than this one already. So, have a little think of it. I'm a bit worried about having one under and one over, how I'd manoeuvre it in. If I could get them both under, like a standard system. I don't know. I'll, have it all, I'll keep trying and I'll have a little think on it. Um, but the inner is all in, and that all clears, that's got room around the engine mounts, everywhere, it's nice and clear there. Just these outers, got to decide where to chop it and where to extend it, and then have it meeting down the bottom again. So, I just wanted to give it a quick chop, just to see how far out it was, and it is quite close, so just got to decide where it wants joining. So... I reckon that'll be for next time. And so I think I really will wrap this episode up now. I'll carry on with the exhaust next week and decide what we're gonna do, whether we'll go inboard or outboard of this chassis rail and decide where to chop. But this week, it's been a real turner for the G unit because it's turned it from its showroom that you've seen it so far back into a working workshop, which is what it is all about. It is grubby, it is dirty, it is building things, fabrication, making things that may be a bit OTT, like I said, I probably could have just used a bit of angle iron for these engine mounts, a couple of holes, and that would have been job done in an hour. But I've spent all day down here. I'm really happy with the results, and I guess that's just me, making the, a piece that's perfect for its use, and it looks good at the same time. So if this is your first time visiting the channel, this is episode five. So we've actually had four episodes before this, building the car to what you see here, and there's lots of explaining on how I got the chassis, where I got the engine parts from, so be sure to go back and check them out and then make sure you subscribe. But I'm going to get a big shower this week because this is the dirtiest so far. So you guys have fun and I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>